I'm Sharon Ijasso and welcome to Labour Lens. Thank you for joining us on today's edition of the programme. We will be discussing about youth unemployment in Nigeria. Also, we have vacancies for those who are seeking for job placement in the country. But first, let's begin with the news. The Nigerian Union of Local Government Employees has raised concern over the process of amending sections of the Constitution pertaining to local government autonomy passing through the state houses of assembly. Speaking on behalf of the union, his national president, Comrade Ibrahim Abukadri, said the call for local government autonomy bill is to foster all-round democracy by strengthening capacity of local government to generate more revenue. He also stressed that the present headsmen and farmers clash can be solved if local governments are given the powers to create local government security. If you look at the area of security challenges, as a local government uh, practitioner, I know, uh, as a young local government worker uh, in the north, I know the farmers' headsmen clashes started as day back as around 80s. And at that period of time, wherever you had, we had any clash between farmers and headsmen, uh, it's a matter that local governments, various local governments that uh, witness those kind of clashes, had the capacity to address through the instrumentality of uh, local government security committees. But uh, because the institutions of local governments have been weakened, uh, the headsmen farmers' clashes become not even state or national issue, is already an international issue. Labour leaders gathered at different places in Lagos to discuss the way forward in ensuring women have more leadership positions in affiliate unions. The United Labour Congress held a lecture to commemorate the day while the Trade Union Congress of Nigerian Women Commission held workshops and meetings to celebrate the day. According to labor leaders in attendance, the International Women's Day celebration belongs to all groups collectively to think, act, and be gender sensitive. When men are talking and said you can go, but they are not showing it that they are really encouraging us to go, we'll still be held back. So we appeal to our men to give us more support, more solidarity, more financial support, more economical support, and more political support. The more they allow us to occupy positions of decision making and be available, they will see the advantage of unionism. There are many unions where women are more, but they allow men to be their president and their general secretaries. We say no, they should take that they should vote, attend meetings at all times. Make sure meetings are fixed at the right time and at the right place so that at the end of the day they will be able to take that thing in their hand. Because if you are not in the CWC or in the neck, when you just have been taken, nobody will remember to take decisions for the woman. The trade union centre that some of us are involved in running, uh, it is free. There is no ceiling for the women. And we are using this uh, year's International Women's Day to say that they should come and we will support them. You know, just to build that confidence uh, on the women, you know, to say, yes, you can do it, step out, you have our support. The National Bureau of Statistics, NBS, in the third quarter of 2017 said, out of a total active labor force of 85 million people in Nigeria, about 16 million people were unemployed in the third quarter of 2017. The report said the category of unemployed persons comprised 8.5 million people who engaged in an economic activity for at least an hour, and 7.5 million people who did absolutely nothing. About 18 million people were underemployed as they worked for 20 to 39 hours a week, which is less than 40 hours required to be classified among the workforce. 
fully employed persons who worked for 40 hours and above in the third quarter of 2017 were 51 million people, resulting in a total of 77.6 million people engaged in an extent of economic activity. The report also revealed that more men worked full-time than women, while a higher percentage of females worked part-time between 20 to 39 hours and below 20 hours per week. The absolute number of male full-time workers was pegged at 34.85 million, which is twice the number of female full-time workers, which is pegged at 16.21 million in the third quarter of 2017. A larger percentage of men to women were self-employed in the agricultural sector, while a larger percentage of women were self-employed in non-agricultural areas of work. Organized labor over time has warned that the latest unemployment report released by the National Bureau of Statistics was a threat to national development. Unemployment in Nigeria now is very alarming. And people are talking of uh, coming out with policy to, to, to persuade people from not moving to the ISIS to try to get to Europe. You can't stop it. You can't stop it because people are really suffering. The masses are suffering. The ordinary Nigerians are suffering. How many families now can afford even two square meals in a day? It's, it's, it, we, uh, we've never seen this kind of a thing before. And the government needs to really wake up to do something meaningful so that we can get out of this quagmire. The Director General of the Nigeria Employers Consultative Association, NECA, Shegun Oshinowo, explained that all tiers of government must rise to promote development through reindustrialization, uninterrupted electricity supply, and war against which makes the product of local industries uncompetitive. You will hear public speakers saying that give them skills. Once you give them skills, they will be employed. Or reform your educational system. Employment is a function of multiple variables, and those variables are mutually inclusive. We can't leave anyone out. What of our environment? We talk of enabling environments. What of our tax system? To what extent is our tax system supportive of employment creation? Due to the increasing unemployment rate in Nigeria, there has been adverse effects on both the economy and the society. The consequences of unemployment in Nigeria, according to the President of the Nigerian Labour Congress, include reduction of the national output of goods and services, increased rural urban migration, high level of poverty in Nigeria, increase in the number of dependent people, amongst others. It's been an issue that NLC have been very consistent in raising. There is no way you can create jobs without industries. All over the world, where the issue of unemployment has been addressed, it has been a combined effort between the uh, non-governmental sector, that is the private sector of the economy, and then government. But government must create the enabling environment for our industries to thrive. You remember when we were in Lagos with Manufacturers Association, we protested the issue of incessant hike in the cost of power. Power is central to the issue of industrialization in Nigeria. Most companies in Nigeria that have folded and moved to other countries is because power is not there and it's expensive. They maintain their generators. They also have to pay a very high tariff. That cannot take us anywhere. And I think this is deliberate. Social commentators have said in recent times that solutions to unemployment in Nigeria are the government must be effective in performing their duties, a social economic environment should be created, the government needs to foresee looming crisis and to make all possible actions to prevent it. Those big infrastructural contracts we are giving out, to what extent are they translated into jobs for Nigeria? Or we just sign off on those big sums without addressing our mind as to what the contractors will do to generate sustainable jobs for Nigeria. According to research, the few employed are in subsistence farming and informal sector. Therefore, there is an urgent need for employment drive in the country. 
sustainable jobs can only come from industry and massive public infrastructural development, such as railways, road construction, reinvention of public schools, and hospitals. Mass unemployment means value subtraction for Nigeria at a time when there is much work to be done and the nation is begging for growth and development. The issue of unemployment, I think we are sitting on a keg of gunpowder that can explode at any time. Considering the fact that the majority of Nigerians, of course, are youths, and what are we doing about them? Uh, we're looking at a lot of palliatives that are not working. Um, universities and other higher institutions are turning a large number of graduates out every year without a structure uh, that will take care of them. I'm talking about government being the largest uh, employer of labor. Of course, the, the, the private sector should be able to handle quite a lot of them. And the palliatives that they are doing are not just enough. They cannot cater. It's, it, they are not enough. The rate of unemployment in Nigeria has con consistently uh, increased. Um, the, I remember there was a time it was 14.2. Uh, it rose to 16.6. From there, we had 18.8. Uh, um, I think that was the last figure in the last uh, quarter of uh, uh, 2017. And the reasons are obvious. There is no way we can have employment rate dropping with um, the economy in a shambles. And I blame it on the, on the government. I blame it on the administrators of uh, universities and uh, institutions of uh, higher learning. The signal is very dangerous. And it's just unfortunate that uh, government is playing a lip service towards it. Because uh, everywhere in the country, uh, government have a responsibility to provide uh, amenities, provide the enabling ground for use for the citizens to be able to be gainfully employed. It's not that government should give everybody work, but those enabling environment is lacking in Nigeria. <music> every segment this week I will be speaking with the president of Nupeng who is also the deputy president of the United Labour Congress. He will be speaking to me on the right policies the government can put in place to ensure that we have more youths being employed. He also made comments about the petroleum industry bill. Join me. Thank you for joining us on the program. Oh, sure. Thank you. My pleasure. Unemployment in Nigeria amongst youths most especially is um, becoming worrisome and according to labor statistics we have more than 60% of um, Nigerian youth um, being unemployed at the moment. What's your take on this? Oh, Sharon, um, sad when you keep hearing these issues of unemployment and then when you look at the indices again, um, uh, I feel as a nation sitting on a time bomb uh, in a situation where um, youths that are coming out of the high colleges, universities and the rest do not see jobs um, to work, a uh, job to do and then they are idle. Of course you will agree with me, an idle mind is a devil's workshop. I have said, canvassed this severally, uh, talking with various uh, institutions and government agencies as regard to this. Uh, we need to rise up uh, to bring back hope um, to, 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 to this country. Of course, you will agree with me. The, the youths are uh, the, the hopes of this country. The youths are the future leaders of this country. And when the future leaders are idle uh, in, in whatever way, uh, you know the consequences. For me, it's one thing to be employed. It's another thing for you to be underemployed. Um, Nigerian Bureau of um, Statistics actually said that more than 50% of um, Nigerian youths, or even an average Nigerian worker, is underemployed. As um, a labor leader, I would like you to expatiate 
on underemployment. I know for you it could be differentiated into casualization of worker, even when it comes to redundancy and the likes. So I would like to ask you, what's your take on being underemployed as an average Nigerian worker? Honestly, when you talk about underemployment, um, it's also an underst understatement in terms of looking at the current population we find ourselves today and um, the kind of work uh, that is existing in the country. Uh, of course, the, the country itself is also underemployed. Uh, and when you look at the, the, the situation where we find, that we find ourselves, uh, if you talk about putting employment statistics on ground and what is needed, to you know, uh, reactivate or put the, the nation's economy in proper perspective and on, on the right pedestrian. It means uh, workers need to be employed, more workers need to be employed. Uh, issues of um, the companies that we're talking about need to be re, you know, uh, recreated that have wound up since uh, the past how many years now. Uh, it is shocking to, to begin to see where um, in those days as a child when I was growing up, I had these two key shops, the Ventis and the uh, uh, UTC. Kingsway was also available. Um, where are they in this country today? I, I was shocked to observe that uh, Kingsway still existed in Kenya. I, I was shocked to see that uh, the Ventis is also existing. And uh, you ask yourself, uh, where are these companies to create the jobs that are needed to put uh, the economic activities of these nations on ground running? And so uh, underemployment, by virtue of the statistics uh, we have today on ground, you know that uh, that is where we have the challenges today we're facing as a country. As a labor man, uh, I want to believe that um, um, from the inception of the military era to where we find ourselves today, um, the administration today is like taking us back into 20 years of our existence as a nation in terms of where we need to find ourselves. So if we don't get it right now, then something is wrong. But I, I want to believe that <laughs> it is already is gone. So when you begin to ask of um, the, the ruling government today to say, look, what do you have for us to do? Uh, when the politicians are busy talking about their re-elections, uh, they need to come back again into telling all the same old stories of uh, give us one year, we're going to perform the expected magic in the hearts of Nigerians. So, so, uh, for me, uh, the expected change uh, that needs to move this country forward is our PVC. And so if that is not there even as a worker, uh, which of course it is a fundamental right to vote, uh, to vote in leadership, as well to vote at leadership. So if as workers uh, we, we do not feel the pains of where we are today as, as a nation, then something is wrong with us even as Nigerian workers. But I'm sure uh, the current situation we find ourselves today uh, the workers have a decision to make, uh, either to move this country forward, or that is to, to, to continue to retrogress the country to uh, a situation where we will be all crying uh, and yearning for that expectation that needed, uh, that is needed in terms of putting jobs on ground for our youths that are coming up, in terms of also bringing up um, leaders that need to move this country forward. The federal government um, claims they've created millions of jobs for an average Nigerian worker. I would like to ask you, how would you rate the NPAR program? Would you say it has achieved its purpose? Of course, the answer is no. Uh, when you talk about, uh, uh, you now ask what are the millions of jobs that is created again. Uh, uh, it's sad when you talk about those who are in and, and those who are also outside. Uh, when you make uh, the comparisons and the average, if you take the average, you know, um, that the answer is, is no. The Empire job has been given the expected uh, number of employment that is expected. Um, Nigerian youths are still out there searching for jobs. I'll tell you, uh, Sharon, just, just make an advert, just a simple advert of saying, look, you, you want to employ uh, maybe just um, 10 graduates as a marketing personnel, just 10. Just make that advert on the media. And, and, and give an address of where you want to do the interview. The number of people that will appear for that interview will amuse you. It will shock you. And so that is the kind of unemployment challenges we have in the country. And so for a government to begin to say, look, we have employed Nigerians, I wonder where the Nigerians are that have been given these jobs. <laughs> Today you hear the challenges that is going on on unemployment in terms of some of these ministries and agencies. People keep employing secretly. 
People just do things in their own ways. Uh, for me, I, we've conversed this over and over again. But I, I think, I, I don't want to know whether it is late, whether it is too early, but something needs to be done. And, and that thing that needs to be done is that, look, I've said this, look, uh, Mr. President needs to sit down, sit to dissolve his cabinet, and bring in the right people to begin to deliver services for Nigerians within this short period of his transition into 2019. Let it be done. And so you, we, we cannot hold the, the country to ransom. And uh, it's sad to, for me, uh, for us to keep talking about these issues of unemployment, for this talking about these issues of power generation in this country. It's sad to keep talking about these issues of uh, non-availability of petroleum products again across this country to create jobs that is expected. So, and then the non-workability of our refineries as to refine these issues locally again. So I keep asking myself, where did we get it wrong? So if, if something is wrong somewhere, then we, we must begin to work in a direction that we need to get things right. So what um, are the visible solutions that you think you can provide in ensuring that we have more youth being employed in the country? Honestly, uh, I, I've said something again uh, in terms of issues of how do we get our youth back on job. Um, again, we need to create the enable environment for investors. Uh, and the enable environment in terms of talking about for investors to come in is to talk about the issues of power, which you've, you've also raised. Uh, where there are no powers existing, uh, investors find it difficult to come in to start um, generating power themselves and say they want to do business and make profit out of it. Now, the, the second issue again is um, um, government should begin to look at how um, is it to declare a, a, a business free zone environment and that can also bring in uh, investors uh, to come in into that environment and begin to create jobs for Nigerians. Look, if you go to China and if you go to other African countries, uh, you, you see a situation where uh, an industrialization village is being created, uh, where uh, jobs are being created for Nigerians and then the environment is secure, there is power generation, there is uh, social infrastructures, uh, the necessary things that need to be available there to keep these investors uh, going is, is made available. So if, if government wants to create jobs today for Nigerians, uh, it means, uh, I've said something here so, sometime last year, I said, look, just the byproduct alone that comes out of the refinery, the crude oil, the crude itself that we refine, the byproduct, it doesn't matter how many byproducts out of that uh, product itself you're seeing, the crude itself, how about, about it is something byproducts. And then if you trim them down again and say, look, what do, how do we manage this product again? You can trim them to 16 byproducts. That can go a long way to do what? To create jobs for Nigerians. So today we are importing, we are as well exporting, and there is nothing to show for to create those economic environment that can create jobs for Nigerians. And so if you don't, and then there is something wrong somewhere. So, Government, again, secondly, should sit back again and create a state of emergency in terms of job generation for Nigerians, in terms of making sure our energy sector is giving the, the urgent attention that is needed, in terms of our railway system. I'm sad. It's, it's sad to talk about this issue of railway. I'm telling you, railway, when we were growing up as children, created millions of jobs for Nigerians. And today, where is that railway? So if we talk about jobs, there are so many things government need to do to get this thing going. I've said one basic thing is declaring, uh, what, what do we need to do? Is it to create, uh, is it to create um, uh, what I call um, a tax holiday within a time frame? And that brings me to where I talk about the short term, the mid term, and the long term processes of getting things done. So when you are able to begin to uh, push these issues that is expected, and if Mr. President feel, look, those I have in my cabinet has failed. I need people to kickstart some few issues within the shortest possible time. Let him go ahead. I've said one basic way of achieving these issues is to dissolve his executive council and bring in the right people to deliver service within the short period into his transition in 2019. And I'm telling you, he, he will buy back the house of Nigerians to keep this system going. Looking at um, national policies, there are several policies that has actually taken place in the last couple of um, months that has not favored the work environment, be it, from the, be it from the banking sector to the oil and gas. 
and other major sectors in the country. I would like to ask you, um, are there any national policies that you think that the government can actually incorporate into the system to ensure that we have a more vibrant economy? Look, Sharon, um, talking about policies, we have good policies that are existing in this country. If you go through our uh, policies, if you go through the constitutions, if you go to some of some of these, um, you know, uh, you know, created um, small small policies in terms of which they are very good. The only problem we have in this country, Sharon, is implementation. In all my my life as a labor leader, in all that I've seen in terms of the policy of government to move this country for, forward, they are good policies. Their yeah, policies, if you put them into, into actions, they play out and they give the expected hopes. Now, when you come into the banking sector, like we talk about, okay, let's, let me just take a simple policy of talking about casualization today. That we have the highest number of casual personnel, you know, that are, are, source, are source workers in the banking sector. The law is there. The, 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 the law is there that, look, you cannot keep somebody to work for you as an assault staff. In more than six years, I mean six months. And once the job in question is just within the time frame that is a permanent in nature and can stay on for more than one, two, three years, that job is a job to be permanent in nature. So it's a pensionable job. But the reverse is the case. Today, an employer will take a job and say, look, work for me for six months, it's renewable, he renews. The next six months you work, he renews. And then you keep working as an assault, assault staff for the next 30, 40 years. Of your life. Of your life. life. And so tell me what impact you think such a person is going to create in the nation's economy. So those policies are there. So where did we get it wrong? What, what is, is the Minister of Labor doing? In terms of making sure these policies have been complied to. We have the judiciary itself, which is the voice of the common man, the voice of the hopeless. The NIC is there. And so what are they supposed to do? I, I keep saying that, Sharon, we don't need to begin to look for, uh, uh, you say you want to look for the, the, the eye of a fish. You now you, you go to the tail to look for the eye of the fish. You will find it. The eye of the fish is on, on the head of the fish. So the policy that is expected to move these nations forward is there. It's there in the government books. Is there in the Constitution? We have the Bible. Is there in the policies of the various, various acts that created all the agencies of governance? The policies are there. And so when you come back into a system to, to get things right, you now begin to see repetitions as if they are creating a new policy. And so you now begin to say this one, say create one, you know, one committee to look into this issue, they form one committee. Either again to take the taxpayers' money that is supposed to come back again to Nigeria to put the infrastructure to pay some committee again to begin to do job. And so these are the, some of the, the challenges we're having in the country. It was good having you on the program. Thanks, Sharon. My pleasure. And that's all we can take on today's edition of the program. I am Sharon Ijasson. Thanks for watching and remember, labor creates wealth. Mm -hmm.